Hello and welcome to Digital and Social Media Marketing Week 9. This week we'll be having a look at social media again, social media part 2. Now this week's going to be a little bit different than the other week's lectures. Rather than focusing on theory and um, how we learn about digital marketing and applying that, we're going to be looking more about the functional aspects of social media um, and the state of the market as it is today, what social media platforms and applications are available and the features, benefits on them and how to do advertising on them or marketing on them. So we're going to look at first of all Facebook and then Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, Pinterest, YouTube, Snapchat and last of all TikTok. So let's start by looking at Facebook. So Facebook was originally called thefacebook.com and was founded in 2004 at Harvard University. It was a bunch of university students getting together and um, making this you know, new for that time app. Uh, and the application or the website at that stage, it connected university students at Harvard University. It was something like a photo book, um, which uh, had photos of students on there and then you could see who was in your class or who was graduating with you. Um, much like a, a, a physical book, um, which they used to do, but they made it digital this time, right? Um, now, it came from the original idea, so before the Facebook was invented, it came from this idea that they'd been playing around with, which was called Face Mash, um, which was in 2003, and then users, it, it, it would come up with uh, two people's pictures, like two students' pictures, and you'd rate them whether they're hot or not, or which one you thought looked better or not. Um, now, from there, so, so that was uh, the face mash, um, and then from there, they kind of grew that into a digital version of their photo book, which then became Facebook, which, well, the Facebook, and now it's just called Facebook. So, uh, it is by far the largest social media networking site that we have, um, and it's, Facebook is now owned by Meta, which is formerly, which was formerly, um, like previously called um, Facebook Inc. So, in two, so this is a picture of the original, uh, what, what the Facebook looked like. It was very clunky, the user interface wasn't very smooth, but that was how things looked um, you know, at that time um, on the internet. So uh, in 2012, Facebook bought out Instagram, and in 2014 they bought out WhatsApp, and they're still buying out many other tech startups. Um, it's part of the Facebook's uh, business model um, to acquire new innovations and integrate within its platform. Um, there has been research that's been done that was expecting um, Facebook to sort of decline in popularity um, as you know like a lot of previous social media platforms have before such as Friendster or MySpace and things like that so they get popular and then they kind of you know get boring and, and phase out and that was what we were expecting to happen with Facebook but um, uh, what Facebook has been doing is, is buying these new innovations and integrating it with its own platform to try and keep it you know, innovative and new and, and exciting. Um, now Meta is one of the world's most valuable businesses uh, and has a market capitalization of $553 billion. So it's a big company. Uh, now 97.5% of the revenue coming through Facebook is from advertising. So people like us that are paying money to promote our products on that um, service on that on that social media application. Now the future direction of Facebook, so I've made this quite clear, is they want to start focusing on the, the metaverse, and which is why their their parent company is now called Meta, um, and that's a whole new thing. We'll look at that um, coming up about what the metaverse is, but it's more of a virtual reality uh, interacting with um, people digitally in this you know, third world virtual environment. Um, now, Facebook does not display all the content posted by friends. So just because you like someone and you become friends with them, um, it doesn't mean to say you, you see everything that gets posted on there. So to, to work out what to show on people's screens, it uses this algorithm which determines what content you are most likely as a user to want to see the most. Um, if it showed every Thing from all of your friends and all of the pages that you like, you just it just be swamped out with, with posts with with content, um, and people you know it, it'd get boring because it'd just be too much. So they go, well, what what if you log on? What are you most likely to want to see? Now the algorithm that determines what content people see when they log into Facebook is kept secret. It's a very closely guarded secret. A lot of people want to know what it is because um, from uh, a marketing perspective, if you work out how the algorithm works, you can sort of um, manipulate your content in a way that it gets favoured and then more people will see your 
your, your content, right? So it, it's kept secret to prevent manipulation by that. And it's not just marketing people, it's like, you know, like people that want to copy and make their own social media sites and stuff like that as well. Um, con Facebook and the algorithm uh, is constantly changing, but th the premise that we focus on is that it seeks to provide the best experience to users. So if you don't understand the, the, the Facebook algorithm, you go, well, what's the point? You know, I, I don't know what's going on. You go, well, the, the more useful your content is to people and the more that people are gonna to wanna to see you, 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 your, what you're posting, um, that's the stuff that Facebook wants wants to show, right? So Facebook, the algorithm might not be perfect. Um, of course, it's going to be very difficult to predict what people are going to want to see before they see it, but that's what they're trying to do. So if we make content that we think people want to see, then it's going to be favoured by the algorithm. All things being equal. Right, so here are some factors that are considered by the Facebook algorithm. So, um, like I said, we don't know what the algorithm is, but Facebook tells us this so that when we develop content, we can keep this in mind to make sure that our content is engaging. Because they want us as businesses and marketers to provide useful content to users that come on the platform as well. So it's a win-win situation. So first of all, engagement. So the algorithm prioritizes posts that have high level of engagement, such as likes, comments, and shares. And that's you know how things go viral. So if you post a video and a lot of people are liking it, watching it, sharing it, commenting it, and stuff like that, then as more people like it, then it shares with more people, and as those people like it and engage with it, it keeps going, that's how it goes viral. Uh, relevance, so the algorithm considers the relevance of the content to the user based on their past behavior. So if you've liked a page, you've interacted with a page before, especially if it's you've recently done that, then the algorithm will determine that you're probably more interested in seeing that. Now, timeliness, the algorithm favors recent posts over older posts, so newer content is more likely to be shown to new users, but it doesn't mean it's only new. Sometimes you see posts or content that's like a couple of days or a couple of weeks old. Uh, content type, so the algorithm, algorithm takes into account the types of content being posted, such as photos, videos, or text posts, and the more rich um, your posts are, so if you just have like a, a simple one line, or you, know, you post a paragraph of text into your status update, um, it's not going to do very well in the algorithm. For one, it's too long. People don't want to read all that, and then it's not engaging enough. So they get. Whereas if you do a short video with a, sh a short caption on there, um, that's going to be favoured more highly by the algorithm. And then the source. So the alg algorithm also considers the source of the content, such as whether it's from a friend, or whether it's a page that you're following, or whether it's a sponsored post. So all these things come together, and the algorithm de determines out of those factors what what you are most likely want to see. When you log into it and use it right now Facebook so businesses can create a business page and they can actually create multiple pages I've got a screenshot here of the um, University of Tasmania page so this is just an example um, and when you so you log in as your personal so I'd log in as Kevin Swartz and then I'd go create a business account and then so for like my personal account Kevin Swartz I'll have multiple businesses linked to my personal account that I am um, managing or that I'm responsible for and I can have more than one person on that account too so we'll just use UTAS as an example so if I was responsible for managing the University of Tasmania when I log on as Kevin Swartz I can go click on my profile button and I can go switch accounts and I can switch to UTAS um, and there could be um, you know multiple people that, that can do that um, so you're gonna be really careful so that if you give all your administrative pr uh, rights to everyone then um, you, you've got to keep idea of who's ownership of that of that business page as well. So the business page is aimed to get likes and followers from interested users. And you typically, the more likes you get, uh, the more followers you have, um, you know, the, 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 the better it seemed to be because um, you, you've got more people that are interested in what you're doing and uh, a large audience to promote to. So the layout of business pages are somewhat customizable. So these things you can see at the top here, uh, you can change those somewhat, or you can click the more and adjust them. Um, you can muck around the layout a little bit, but um, it's, that's changing. You used to be able to change it a lot more, and now they're trying to get more standardized um, business templates. And that's to enhance user experience. So when users go to these Facebook pages, these business pages, it's in a similar layout so they know what to expect and where to find things. All right, now advertising on Facebook is actually fairly easy. Uh, so when you do ads, you can do it in multiple formats. So the first one is you can be uh, images, so you just do a photo and upload that. You can do video, 
um, where you'll record a video, upload that, and you can you can promote that video. You can have a carousel ad, which is basically like we've got down the bottom here. Oh, um, this is the the. So the carousel is basically where you can look at one picture then slide on to the next one. So it basically rotates around and you can flick it around and then you get to the end and then it starts at the beginning again. So that's what's called a carousel. Uh, you can have a slideshow ads with multiple images. Um, and then this last one is collections ads with video and four images. So this has got the four images in there and then you've got the video at the top there. So there's different formats that you can do. Um, when you log into Facebook business, um, you can help like there, there's tools there to help you develop these ads which is makes things um, really good now advertising on Facebook is user friendly it's it's really good because it's designed to get small businesses involved in that as well and then when you get hardcore more in, like like more into like you're managing multiple Facebook uh, pages and stuff like that there's there's tools that you can use that sort of amps that up but from from a small business perspective it's not like you have to you know, go hardcore into marketing to be able to promote your products on Facebook. It's designed to be as simple as easy to use at the beginning, right? So, all you simply do is you go uh, um, on one of your posts. If you log into a business page, you'll have down the bottom there. Um, you can just boost it, and you go and and they they promote this a lot. They're always trying to get you to encourage you to like when you've got a business page to promote your posts and pay for advertising, right? So you just go in there, uh, boost post or advertise, and then. Um, you can choose what your objectives are, whether you want to increase impressions, uh, reach, so you want to increase the more people that see it, um, or engagement, so the more people that like it, share it and stuff on you know, the network. Now, the good thing about Facebook, and a lot of other ones are following with this, is they use artificial intelligence to develop a lot of these auto options for you. So you can see here on this page here, the goal, um, what results would you like from this ad? And I've got it set at the moment to automatic where it says, let Facebook select the most relevant goals based on your settings. And they go, well, how big is your page? What's your target market, blah, blah, blah. And, and they do that automatically. So they know from where you are and the people that like your page, what the best way to promote your business is. Um, you don't know how they determine that, but in my experience, it's actually been fairly good. Um, so, if you are, you know, digital marketing, you've studied this, you know it, like you might customize it, you go change that, and you can uh, override it to do your own goals. But the beautiful thing about this is, um, so us as digital marketers, we might go, oh no, we, we, we know exactly what we want to do. But if it's a small business owner that doesn't know, then the computer, like the artificial intelligence, works that out for them. Um, so digital marketers can adjust these settings manually, uh, which is in here. Um, all right, and so down here, I think I've got this on the next page. I just want to point this out. You can actually set your budget in here. So this one's currently set for thirty-eight dollars fifty, which is a nice small amount, and it's anticipating um, we're going to reach two hundred and forty-two to seven hundred people to see this ad, which I'm loading up right now. Audiences can be customized by using targeting. Um, so. You know, what we would call segmenting. Um, they've simplified the language a lot so you don't need a marketing degree to understand it. We talk about segmentation, targeting and positioning. So they just called the whole lot targeting. Uh, so to, to target you need to segment your market up and then choose which segment to target anyway. So it's it's the similar thing, it's just a simplified language. So audiences can be customized using targeting. This includes market segmentation by location, which if you look here, um, I think it defaulted to Launcester. It's got plus 10 miles. So that should be kilometers. I'm not sure why it's in miles. Uh, and then down here, you can do detailed targeting. So again, this can get done automatically by uh, Facebook's artificial intelligence, or you can override it. Uh, the interests, which you go down here for the detailed targeting. Now, the problem with Facebook interests is in um, places like Tassie, the, the interest... So they automatically come up with these interest segments. And in my experience, they're good-ish. They're not, they're not, like, if you wanna do precise marketing, it can be a little bit frustrating because the interest groups, so they're still populated interest groups aren't there to, to choose from necessarily, especially in smaller places because they need a certain numbers of people to be able to fill out those, those, those um, interest segments, right? Uh, and the last one here, which you can't see, because you have to go into advance this, behaviors. And that's basically where they look at um, the behaviors of their users, such as um, if, 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 
if someone logs into Facebook and they click on an ad and they go through and explore that and they purchase something, you think you click on the ad and you go to a browser, but you don't. It's actually done in um, Facebook's sort of their own web browser type thing and they're tracking your behavior there. So you could go, well, we want to sort of um, only target people that actually buy things through Facebook um, and, and, and those types of things. When you go, when you do it, um, you can go through and have a look because um, this is likely to change and get better as we go along. But at the moment, it's it's there. I, I, I think it's going to get get better. It's got a little bit of a way to go to, to sort of get up to the, the level that we want for digital markers. Um, digital markers can also use events targeting in Ads Manager, um, which is a separate thing where you um, you log into Facebook, Facebook Business thing, and there's like a, a uh, console there where you can manage multiple ads with multiple um, business accounts. Um, but also possible to create custom audience and save these for future, which is pretty cool. So you might go, I've got a uh, one target market for selling this product and another target market for selling this type of thing. So you can save those. So later you go, I want to promote it to you know these predetermined um, segments. All right, now for paying for Facebook, they use click per mile or thousand impressions, uh, uh, sorry, cost per thousand impressions, cost per click, and then cost per action pricing. Um, now, so setting a daily or total budget that runs over a specified duration. So you go, most I want to spend, you could go, uh, it's $35 in total, or you could say, I want to spend 20 bucks per day, whatever you want to do. And you can adjust the duration that it longs for. So this one's got, that it goes for, so this one's set for seven days, um, and so it's going to end on the 27th of April. And over the entire budget, it's going to only spend $35. Of course, you can ramp that up. So um, $35 isn't going to get you a lot of Facebook advertising. Uh, Facebook is quite expensive to advertise on Facebook because it's so popular, so many people are doing it. Um, compared to some of the newer social media platforms, so you want to put a bit of money in there, but the res it, it's like the, the results are definitely there compared to um, traditional media. Uh, so it's good that they estimate the number of users. And in my experience, so this one's quite broad. Where was the? It said um, 242 to 700. So that's quite a broad segment because it's only a small thing. If you're dealing with like tens of thousands, in my experience, it's been fairly accurate. It's like they. They put a little bit extra on there to, to get to the, the goal that they said that they'll get for you. Um, I'm, I'm not sure exactly how that works, but you'll be tracking behind and then all of a sudden they'll go and hit it hard to get to, to the target. And um, yeah, so um, that's all done automatically. So you don't have to worry about it. You just say, this is how many, this is how much I'm prepared to spend, this is how many days, and I'm expecting to see between two, like 242 accounts. So that's count, so that's like actual personal accounts. Um, or 700 between those two that's what I'm expecting the, the good thing about Facebook is it's easy to link PayPal with your Facebook thing um, so you link your business PayPal with your uh, Facebook account and then you just boost you just boost a post or pay for it and it just goes automatically one weird thing that happens with Facebook is it often bills you daily or every couple days for some reason I'm not sure rather than giving you like a $35 bill at the end it'll give you like bills as you go along which is a bit annoying and the other thing is I'm not sure if this is still the case I can't remember but uh, the 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 billing comes out of Ireland I think uh, I'm not sure if that's still the case I can't remember uh, because they've got tax incentives uh, for hosting their headquarters over there all right so that was Facebook I'm gonna stop it here and then we'll get into Instagram